Well, being that the weather's gone down the shithole, we thought we'd take a trip down memory lane. As I've gone through the bee making, frame doing, all the rest of it, I've got a little bit slack in the old age, and I just started buying frames already made, because they're roughly between $3.80 and $4.20 already. They come in a pack of 20, and they look like this. They've got their little eyelets, they've got the old things nailed together and wired up, and all I've got to do is put the wax on. But before I become such a slack pillock, I've still got, I don't know, four or five boxes of frames to be made, and I thought, well, here's a good opportunity to show you how to make some frames and get my ass motivated to make them up so we can use them. So it's a win-win situation for you to see what happens and for me to get some frames made. Now, rule number one. If you're ordering frames, these come in a big packet, so I've got a boxes of the full things here, but if you're ordering them, get them with the eyelets already in. It'll be slightly dearer with the eyelets installed, but it is a pain in the bum job. Let me tell you for free. If, it's, if there's anything about making frames that's the most annoying part, it's putting in the eyelets and getting the jolly silly wire through the eyelet hole when you bent the full thing over. Because you can get these ones, these are the ones that come without eyelets. And of course, just to add to your fun, if you don't get eyelets in the frames already and they come that way, then you have different sizes. And I can only find the big eyelets that don't fit in these frames, so this is most annoying, but I've shown you that you can actually burrow out your hole. And then you have to have an eyelet, an eyelet applicator, which I lent to a mate of mine who's making bloody lots of these because he's got more spare time to put eyelets in. And hell, like I said, I got slack enough. I just started buying them already done. Get your little eyelet like that. I've got this sitting on a nail. My other eyelet applicator was a grounded off screwdriver, which works quite good. Or you can buy the real thing from the shop, which I didn't think worked as good as my screwdriver, because I actually ground the screwdriver off and I had a flat edge, which was the right height for the flat edge to sit against the cap and the bit would push in there. And then you gotta go, but don't do it. <laughs> so if you'd like to be tortured, feel free to get your eyelets separately and do this fun job. But I don't know, they always end up drifting off under my bench. And you can imagine in my tidy workshop, I never find the jolly things when they do that. So you need your little applicator and then you need to give it a little tap just to get it started because that's the fun part. This is like I said, these are not the right ones for this particular. Even when they are right, it's a pain in the bum to get them in there. So if it was me, and it is me actually in my shed, I don't actually get around. I mean, I just... Bloody hell, I, I don't know, it was a progression, I guess. I started off putting the eyelets in. Gradually, I worked towards buying the frames with eyelets. And as I said, as, as time progressed, I've ended up just going and getting the frames already done, so I don't even have to do this job anymore. For those out there in beekeeping land that are purists and like to make their own frames, well, good on you. They are painful things to put in, but I guess I've got to do this as well, because I've got a box of these as well in the cupboard. Oh man, yeah, probably. Maybe I could sell them. Anybody want to buy some B frames without eyelets? <laughs> and another thing you're going to find out on this journey of blooming frame making, if you buy them from different companies, they don't go together because they have slightly different grooves the way they make them. It's very unlikely that these bloody sidebars are going to be the same and take the blooming top bars of a different cut out. Now these are out of two different packets. And you can see that they're just slightly different. Now where I've got, I've got the, which one did I just put the stupid rivets in? This one. So this, hell, I better remember, that's that. That's the ones that I'm doing. And it just won't quite go together. So that's where it's meant to go in that one. Hang on, or that one. Shit, I've got it around the wrong way. Ah, which way am I going, John? Anyway, that one, see that goes together. But, now I'll put it over there so it don't get mixed up. <laughs> but it won't quite go or it will or most times it won't go together and then you snap the little bloody leg off and that's a painful business oh you see how that's a bit sloppy so because they're going through all they've done is when they make these of course they run the jolly little router like they have it in a big block and then and they make the cut and then they slice them all into little bits and then they put them in a box and they send them to us so, of course, if it's coming from a different factory, they've got them all a poofteenth out and just it can get a little bit annoying. So, another thing to keep in mind. I don't know, but anyway, as I was saying at the beginning of this little demonstration, if it was up to me, I'd leave these in the box and just don't, 
Don't order them. Just get them done. It's just crazy shit. But you know what? I guess if you've got plenty of spare time, what the hell? But it's truth. My advice is buy them with the eyelets already in the, at the very least. I'm just going to put these eyelets back on the shelf where they've lived for the last year or two or three or four. I can't remember how long. But anyway, they can live back up there, I reckon, for all I care. Okay, right, let's get motivated, let's get motivated. Whew. Yep, okay, John's getting impatient. I might just cut me straps off with me putty knife. <laughs> Maybe I won't cut it. Perhaps I've got to go and hang on. Me side cutters. Maybe I'll use them. Oh, come on! Oh. oh, you know what that means. That means I'm committed. I have to make them now. Boom and hell. Anyway, they can't stay in the box forever. Okay, that's ridiculous. Not a cheap investment buying these things. So, A bloke should not be so slack. Just get on with it. Get on with it! Now, of course, you could spend the time and make yourself up a jig. I've got one that holds about 10, but I haven't got it here, so too bad that's what's going on here. What you need is one bottom bar, one top bar, and two sidebars. Now, there is some controversy out there in the land of the beekeepers as to whether or not you should use aqua deer to hold this together. I personally haven't got all that motivated because I put a nail sideways, but... And I also think if you ever wanted to pull a frame apart, you could actually pull them to bits if you didn't have them glued. But you know what? That was my original thought, and I've never pulled a top bar off to fix it yet. I've chucked them in the fire. So <laughs> be as you wish. If you want to PVA glue them together, and please just, if you are a serious PVA gluer upper of your frames, feel free to do it. Don't get all excited and message me and say it should be done because, you know... Is there anything really in this life that is 100% correct? Except for maybe death and taxes, that happens to us all, but you know, let's just run with it. Let's just calm down and just run with what I'm doing. But go out and buy some PVA glue if you feel so led, but you don't really need to. So anyway, first important, very important part of the project is make sure you've got your little pins facing out away from the frame, otherwise, the bloody defeat the purpose. The whole idea of these bloody little things is when you pull the wire up tight, it doesn't pull through the wood because we've got such pissy ass bit of pine now. The blooming wire pulls through the wood and then of course your wire ends up slack. So, so some smart person decided to put all these little rivets in here. And as I said earlier in the demonstration, buy them already put in, save you a whole lot of headache. So normally I just start at the bottom, slide the two uprights, making sure that the little rivets are facing out. Sit them on a nice solid surface and you've got your bottom like that and then you get your top bar which is going to fit in there just nicely and you want yourself a little rubber mallet because what you want to make sure you tap it all nicely together and then I like to sit it up on its edge and just to make sure this is actually secure because quite often you don't get that quite right it's a bit of a bum so because you want it all nice and flush so when you put it in your bee box it doesn't get snagged or nothing and it doesn't break as easy. And then, of course, you can nail it with a nail. There's nothing wrong with that if you're only doing a few, I don't know, 10, 20, maybe up to 100. When you get to the point when you... Now, this is where life gets very interesting. You see, now, I started off with a hammer and a nail, and then I got all motivated, and I bought myself an air compressor and an air gun so I could get it better. And then I went through this process, and I bloody got frames with rivets in, and eventually I got myself all set up to do it all really quickly, and then I thought, screw it, I just went more and more remade. So, but that is not the purpose of this video. So anyway, if you don't have an air gun and you're not making thousands of frames, don't rush out and buy one, okay? Just use a hammer and a nail, so. But if you happen to want an air gun and your wife needs an, ex well, you need an excuse for your wife or your better half, or whichever way your partnership's working out, well, you can use it as a really good reason that you have to go out and get yourself an air compressor and an air gun and all the other cool shit that you can have when you do that. So, you know what? Just depends. So, you know, just skip over that little part if you're trying to sell her on something, all right? Anyway, I digress. Let's go. Try to get the full nail in the middle. That's always good. Now, in the top, in the top bar, I usually put two nails because this is the one that we, in the bee box, you're going to be levering up on this to try and get your frame out when it's all stuck together. So I normally put two nails in that and then I'll get all excited and I'll go this way if I can get it hit right. And then you only really, I don't know, me personally, I only put one nail in the bottom because I think that's plenty. Because the bottom's really not going to be taking any pressure. Well, unless, of course, you're in a 20-year-old beehive like we were the other day and you've got to leave her out backwards. Well, that was a bit weird, but still. 
Anyway, no awards for that nail. Look at that, failed already. So if you do happen to have a mishap like that, just use another nail because it's a very, very poor effort, MJ. At least I managed not to put it out the other way. Now, as you go along, it gets a bit laborious, this job. So you probably want to have some blooming music playing in the background, or I don't know, a podcast, or something, I don't know. You could probably actually listen to a podcast about beekeeping if you were really bored. <laughs> or you could listen to our new show, which is about true rhymes, and you could tune in and find that out. That'll keep you amused for a few hours while you're making frames. Click on the link down the bottom of this video and... Actually, as yet again, it's not a video, it's electronic transfer and technology in a youtube -y thing. So don't call it a video, you funny old man. It's like when you tell your kids, I'm going to go and put a record on, and they go, what the hell is a record? You know, I feel sorry for the blooming music industry a little bit, though, because now you just download it all and it just flies into outer space and turns up in your blooming playlist, and well, I do. my wife's doing the right thing. She actually paid for the, what's that called when you don't have ads on the, Blooming air, the radio, electric air thing. What's that blooming thing called? Um, Spotify. That's the name of the thing. Yes. So she's doing the right thing and putting some money back in the artist's pockets. If you feel so led as to put some money back in our pockets so we can keep this show going, I'm sure there's a sponsoring linky thing down the bottom of this page too. So check that Patreon shit out. Sorry, I digress. Right. So we're making up these businesses. As I said, make sure you got your bits in here, your bits facing out. You've got the thing all square. Very important to try and keep the thing square. If you have it in a, I don't know, you could get all excited and have it in a jolly supported thing, but if you're just a little bit sensible, you can make sure it's square, so. Very important though. Round and round and round we go. Where it stops, nobody knows. Now one other trick that is worth knowing, is when you're making these silly things, stack them opposites. So then they actually stack nice and nice like that, and you'll end up with a nice pile. It'll stack up 10 or 20 higher, whatever you want. Because if you stack this all things like in the same bit, eventually they end up like a big bloody thing and they fall on the floor. Oh, not a big thing, what's it called? An arch. An arch, is that an arch? I don't know, anyway. Anyway, they all bloom and get wobbly donk and fall on the floor, so put them opposites. There you go, there's a, there's something. Now you wouldn't think that would be interesting, but it is. It's a very cool thing to learn and save you making that mistake. And of course, all these different frames come with different things. I mean, this is actually a dual purpose frame because if you've got the slot in the bottom here, you can use a wax foundation, which will slip into the slot in the top. Hang on, where's this jolly? Hang on, wait a minute. Oh no, now I've made a mess. <laughs> ah, stay there. So you get a slot across here, which is where you put your wax foundation as well onto your wires. If you want to use plastic foundation, come to think of it, I've got some in the cupboard here somewhere that we're going to use up. Then you can use the bottom. So if when you're ordering these things, depending on what you want to do, is depending on which ones you order. So if you want to use your plastic foundation, just remember you got to get the rebated bottom bar. If you're using wax foundation and you don't give a shit, you don't need to get excited because it'll do, wax will do either one. But just keep that in mind from a wise, frustrated old beekeeper. It's very helpful. I'm not sure about the wise part. Definitely the old. Oh, every chance to kick the poor old bloke. Every opportunity, never one missed. Just bash, bash, bash. Ah, tell you what, I don't know. And now this is when it just goes on and on and you put the radio on because you're like, oh. And the wife says to you, how was your day? And by that stage, you've had 10 ports and you're like, oh, really good. Well, the worms are biting and the dinner bell's ringing, so I think it's probably about time to call this a night. This just goes on and on and on, this frame making business. It just like, but you know what? 
it's all good because it gives the ladies somewhere to build a nest and gives them somewhere to put the honey together and then when we beekeepers turn up we can actually get the honey out of the hive and put it through our extractors and turn up to have some honey for you to buy and if you'd like to buy some bush bee man honey head over to the website and the bush bee company and grab yourself some delicious honey from down here in south oz